There's a lot of good information in this video. PetSmart offers some well-structured dog training classes. We're about halfway through a basics beginner course that's about six weeks long. In addition to that, we're also taking a stress less course. In this class, we're learning how to recognize and what to do about Eros's separation anxiety and his aggression. Here's a big thank you to Jake of PetSmart for letting me shoot video of one of our sessions. Friendly, happy environment keeps them in a good mood and engaged, um, especially because we're out and about in a foreign environment. We wanted to show them a good appreciation for this good behavior while we're being out and about to show that it's not stressful when we go out all the time. Sometimes we get to go have fun, have a good bunch of treats, even if we're not playing or doing stuff all the time. We should sit down every now and again. You know you're sick. This is Brian from Ivy Acres Homestead. I'm here at PetSmart with my new dog, Eros. We're doing a series of dog training classes, and this is Jake, one of the Hello. instructors. I'm trying to get Eros to do a sit, but he's not giving it up. He doesn't know the hand signals very well. Okay. Verbals, he's pretty good with. Can you sit? Yes, sit. There you go. There we go. Yes, good job. This will be a taster. Good job. Awesome. So right now we're just trying to give Eros in a good mood and make sure he's nice and happy because we've heard that we're a little stressed out sometimes. And when we're stressed out, we can just try to um, beat that by just giving him good happy feels and just really giving that positive reinforcement and uh, activating all those endorphins. And especially a good way to activate endorphins is giving trees. So in theory, if uh, I go to a tense situal uh, stressful situation and I get treated for it, I then start looking at that stressful situation differently. For instance, if I am afraid of dogs and then every time I see a dog and instead of getting scared I get an ice cream, I then am going to start getting less scared of dogs because every time I see a dog I think I'm getting an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. To really treat stress, we just really like to show that that stressful time is a happy time. Especially because I don't know Eros very much and he's not used to strangers. It's very nice that he's able to just take uh, treats from me and just be happy with me and just get to treat me like a friend. Good yeah. friends, good friends. Now, I wanted to point out that bringing Eros into the store, we did have a muzzle on him, and that's just for protection. He has acted out, lunged at a few people. So we want to make sure that he doesn't do that to random strangers when we can't really control the environment with, with a store with lots of people that get close. When we're out on a walk, we don't really use the muzzle because we can maintain enough distance. But by mutual consent, we decided to go ahead and take the muzzle off for this class. And this is a one-on-one -on -one kind of situation, so it's a little more con conducive to that. I was hoping, Jake, that you could uh, maybe just give a quick synopsis of the class, maybe what it's called, yep. and exactly what we're trying to do. Today, um, we are in our week two of three weeks that would be our stress less class. And the idea of the stress less class is that we identify and learn about um, things that um, basically cause our dogs stress and anxiety. Um, especially like in the first week, we talked a lot about separation anxiety and how that happens and what causes it. And then um, ways to identify uh, stressors, things that um, dogs do to with their body language that tell us that they are stressed, that they are not happy or sad or scared. All these different kinds of things are they um, portray to us with body language. And with the stressless class, it's uh, used to identify those stressors so that way we can correct, uh, properly help them feel better, safe, and sound. Mm -hmm. Separation anxiety is definitely a thing. If I go into the goat shed to feed the goats and I'm out of sight for just a minute or so, I've got arrows tied up to the, to the fence so he doesn't get away and he isn't interacting with the goats that way. And he'll start barking because he's really uncomfortable with not having one of his people you know, within eyesight. 
And what have we been doing to help him with that? Well, uh, well, I come back and I, you know, give him a treat. The other thing is our neighbor, Randy. There's something that sets the dog off with Randy in particular. Right. And I've talked to him about it. I have had one instance where I was able to see Randy about maybe 30 feet away. Okay. And the dog was on alert. Okay. Hey. Just like that. Just like that. Sure. And uh, I gave him some treats. I had him sit as a distraction. And it worked, worked pretty well. And it, it was pretty brief. So. They're yeah. all going to be, uh, they should be pretty brief. And that's awesome. That was a great experience. We just had someone in the background walk back forth across and drop off some garbage. And in the instance, Eros was very much alert off about this new person and didn't know what to do. And as they walked off, they showed a little bit of aggression. As we can safely do as a, a target is retreating away. Kind of like I saw in that first video you showed me, it wasn't until your neighbor leaned back and started going backwards into the rest position or essentially retreating that Eros even lunged in the first place. So they felt like that was they were waiting and got their opening, and they weren't thinking about anything else other than waiting for that opening. Okay. So basically, we need to teach Eros that he needs to let go of that mindset of that we have to protect Dad and we have to stop protecting our things because once we're attached to Dad, we need to be able to trust Dad to protect us from those things instead. Yeah. Yeah. And like you did with the uh, neighbor, you let them pass. Eros saw the neighbor, got tense but you corrected them, you got them in a safe position, and you gave them a reward. And that is just the first couple steps that we see that neighbor, and we're trying to turn it into, instead of an alert, you saw that neighbor, I want you to find that neighbor because we need you to get a treat. And we're turning that anxiety into endorphins. So that you say, instead of switching the anxiety stick, when we uh, see that neighbor, we insert the um, endorphin thing and just want treats and love. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just about creating that energy focusing all that negative protective energy that and anxiety and fear and turning it into love and appreciation. And a lot of this is just because Eros here has grown up in an environment where they've had to very much protect themselves and um, didn't know how to you know navigate the world and never had someone to keep them safe. So they always had to be the one being the safe keeper. So they've learned all these kind of tricks to stay disengaged until they could attack and be the aggressor and be the way they need to do, which has taught them how to keep themselves safe. Yeah. Which is why they come up all kind of calm and comforting and wait till the person to back off and then they come back. That's the that's their opportunity. Exactly. So now that we've identified why Eros is doing this kind of reaction, um, basically we just need to um, understand it and uh, react uh, quicker to it. So. Um, we know that Eros doesn't exactly show all the body signs of aggression when coming up to a person until he gets his safe chance. And this is a pretty smart move when it comes to think about it. He's found oh, a safe way to assault things that doesn't endanger himself as much. But it makes him the pos like a positively um, top aggressor that can't really be countered, essentially. Does that make sense? Yeah. A sneak attack. Exactly. I did shoot video of one of Eros' sneak attacks. This behavior was not playful. It was serious. I do show that clip to dog professionals so they know exactly what we're dealing with. But on our channel, we've decided not to show that clip publicly. And uh, we just need to teach him to stop that. Right? No, we're not attacking. Don't do that. Keep alert, friends. Keep alert, friends. And so to do this, also we just need to also have um, high value treats is really helpful. Having like um, freeze dried liver treats or just something really desirable, something that's easy to carry around in our pocket, of course. So that way we can give people these treats and they can casually, kindly give them to Eros. And uh, even if Eros uh, keeps his muzzle on, we don't need them to give them the treat all the way up first. We, that's not the it's point. Awesome. They, if they can just, he can just get used to someone just tossing him a treat and him passively taking treats from strangers, showing Eros that strangers have the best treats and they should be friends, we'll just slightly start to disengage that people are scary notion. 
and it's, it's money. not everybody because it's right. really random. It's hard to it's hard to say. Sometimes it takes a larger, more imposing person, or maybe someone with the right mindset that isn't uh, following um, their um, their energy essentially. If they smell someone or something that just kind of start getting them aggravated, it's just going to flip that switch, and then they're going to be stuck in there um, without knowing what to do because they haven't been corrected at other times. And this is why we just start that correction. We just need to be consistent with it and just try to keep continually letting them know that this is what's going to happen when the scenario happens. So this is where actually even trying to talk to your neighbor and trying to get a bunch of him just walking back and forth in front yeah. of the dog. We'll slowly just, work up to that, I think. Right. Yeah. But um, similar situations, you can go to like a park or road or up here just in the front of the store and, you know, he might just try to keep lunging at him. But that's the point, is that we're trying to fix that behavior. We're showing him that that's not what we want. He comes here, he sits with us, we keep him safe. We're keeping him safe, he focuses on us. If he sees that thing, that's great. If he reacts to it, that's fine. As long as we get him back, he comes in. We put him in half the spot. And a lot of times it'll be harder too, because we really want to just keep going back. But that's where, if the item was over here, I would just simply move over here, really just changing their physical direction away from the object so that way we can get our focused mind off of that. Get the dog focused on you rather than the exactly. thing. So it's all about That's focus. difficult. Yeah. That can be difficult. And uh, I believe you're on, uh, that's your third week of class coming yep. up here soon. Yep. You'll be learning on that uh, third week of class, leave it. And as you learn that, leave it, now we'll have a word to actually say, leave it, which is disengage from that of what you are looking on now and pay attention to me. Or disengage from it so we can keep walking. And that will be also disengaged from that dog. We're not attacking that. We're here sitting, being mindful and happy. Yes, we are. So last, last week we talked about um, stressful identifiers, things like um, for arrows here, um, a lot of it was uh, body posture. Um, with our short hair on our back, we can see the poly erection, which is the hair standing on the back. Um, not so much with the harness, but you can still kind of see it right there in the back of their neck. It's a really important, easy body um, sign to really look for because when you think about it, you can't control the hairs on the back of your neck, but they definitely stand on edge when you get anxious. And that's the same thing that happens to them. Once they get anxious, whether it's good anxiety or bad anxiety, anxiety is what it is. It just makes that hair stand on edge. And then, uh, it's the same way with goats, amazingly enough. They're really prominent. We're going to film them right now. They look all icky. They don't look icky. Yes, they do. Look at that cute face. They have diarrhea all over them. Don't they got munchy face all over them? Little boy face. Little boy face. These guys have that little boy face. See, that's gross. <laughs> See, we got a bunch of curious information. Uh, they keep hearing a noise and they heard a little growl and they pointed. You see their ears kind of move. Um, that ear moving back is kind of showing that uh, what's going over there and pointing. Uh, most of the time, um, for ears, what we're looking for is we see relaxed when they're up. We are kind of disengaged when they're down to the side. And then we're back, angry, pointing, anxious, ready to go after a thing. That's really um, a lot of what we can try to see with arrows here, but I'm pretty sure arrows is kind of sneaky when he wants to attack things. So it's just really kind of hard to read his body language, especially because he doesn't curl up his tail behind his legs. He keeps wagging it. His posture even remains slightly even and loose um, until the exact moment. So we just need to be very preemptive in knowing that he's trying to trick us and that he's actually still scared. So even at this moment, I was like, hey, arrows, come come back come back? Yes. Focus on me. Focus it. Yes, sit. Good thing. Good job. Thank you. Because, like, even every time he's going to, like, focus out there and he's like, Ooh, he's getting scared. So we'll want to just even correct that. Because we got to remember that he's just been through a lot. We have a lot of deprogramming to go through when it comes to all that programming. Yes, good job. Don't need to worry about that. The outdoor out there is not so important. This is what's important. Right here with us. Your safety. You're here with us, nice and safe. Did you see what happened there when I went from heading their back to their front? 
You notice I sort of just pet them in the back and they kind of shunned away because that's an unsafe place to be pet. Oh, it's right, right. not controlled. And then they went to their front. But that's okay because that's our safe spot. That's good. Or even still slightly scared to be pet on the back. That makes sense too, because that's where we get grabbed by people, that's where people get us. You know? So we might have even been handled there inappropriately or physically or roughly just when getting rescued. So that's a lot of part of desensitizing, making sure they're being handled. And it's hard because just us giving them the love and handling them everywhere is usually comforting and fine. But that's why we need to make sure other people can do it too. Real world situations. Yeah. I thought what I was going to be learning was what I needed to do to reassure and correct my dog. I didn't anticipate the value of positive exposure to other people and other dogs. And then like, I want to be able to touch their beans and their paws so that way I can trim their nails. Or, you know, if I need to take them to the groomer, I need to be able to make sure they can be handled by a stranger that can get them basic and close get in their ears, really check them out, make sure that there's nothing in there, have to maybe wash them out and then get something wet and stick them up in there, it's not very comfortable. We need to make sure that we can get our mouths lifted up and get our teeth slipped at, have that not be an issue, good job, good job, yes, your hand, yes, good job. And then even getting pets here in the back, even though know, that might not be so comfortable, look at this here, we're kind of not sure oh, about okay. it, but yep. we're liking it as we're getting positive loves, but we're just not used to it. It's kind of scary, but we're liking it scary. So we're just kind of letting this love wash over all that fear that we've already pre uh, made for ourselves, and we're finding acceptance. And that's really what we gotta just do with uh, neurosurgeons. We gotta just show them so much love, and so much attention, and so much appreciation that, that all that fear just washes off and becomes a thing of the past. See, this is already really nice. They're showing me um, that they trust me by showing me their back. Okay. Um, they've just, um, a dog, if they sit with their back to you or if they stand on your foot or something, this is showing a sign of connection. I like you, I trust you, I can be here without having to be here. And this is a great way to, if you can get a stranger to be like that with your dog, you can slowly get more people. But I've also been here just feeding him treats. So he's got no oh, yeah. reason to not yeah. like me. Because all I do is I give him treats and I give him love. I don't make him do anything. I don't take him anywhere scary. All I do is just give him affection and I just engage his mind, which is all great things. Hey, Rose. Hey, good job. And then there's not also very many things distracting back here. It might be smelling because of bugs by the dog, but none of them are here, so he's completely fine. It much easier. So a lot of your practice is going to be just really just getting that exposure and just uh, showing them those dogs and having them look at a dog, get that reaction, teach him how that we disengage from it, get the reaction. He's been he's been great with other dogs. It's just been people's. yeah people. Just people's. So a lot of that too could just be like um, we don't know who was in his past. We don't know who he's interacted with. We don't know. Um, the kind of people that rescued him to the kind of people that got him into the place where you got to rescue him. So a lot of that could just be they look similar, they dress in the same color, they have similar facial hair. It just has to be one particular thing that looks the same to a person that scared us or gave us an event that was traumatizing to remind us why we're afraid of things. And we just need to reprogram that anxiety into appreciation and showing them that um, these people aren't scary, they even come with treats. And that can be hard with the muzzle sometimes, and uh, but appropriate so if you're just not so sure and we're in the testing phases, we know that we like to be sneaky, we'll be fine. It's just where, you know, like, they can just get the chance to just meet and smell a few bunch of people at a time, and then she gets treats out, and then we're bored. And even if it's just from you, that's great, because she's just showing that she can interact with these people nicely with you, you know, and you just get bugs. Uh, I just did something interesting. I had them look at me in the eye. And the reason why that's interesting is because dogs as eye contact is actually a form of challenge. And sometimes once you get that, it can be daunting. I 
especially when we've been out and about and afraid of things already so much. Yeah, that's awesome. So if I can also teach her that looking people in the eye isn't a sign of challenge all the time, because a lot of times as people look down at dogs, we'll just look at them in the eyes naturally, because that's people, what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. So we need to also teach her that we can look at people in the eyes. Yes, that's on. And that it's rewarding. These guys, are, eyes aren't scary. They mean I have attention. Yes, good job. And I'm using what's called a luring trick. I'm taking this lure, and I'm luring it to eyes. Yes, that's on. Two point work, sometimes I can just point. Say, yes! Good job. And then we can call this look. Yes! We've, we've had a little bit of trouble sometimes getting him to look if we didn't have the treat. We yeah. pulled the treat off to the side. Yes! He wants to look at the treat. So that's, sure does. that's why, like, for the most part, at first I did have the treat multiple times. But now I'm trying to just do it with my finger. Yes! Good job. Because if I can at least get them to divert away from the tree and give me eye contact, yes, yeah, awesome. They're performing the tree appropriately in the concept of eye contact. And getting eye contact, like I said, um, is a sign of uh, sometimes a challenge. So we just want to make sure they're comfortable with it. So this is also a good one to practice with just people and friends. Don't try to go with strangers exactly right away, but like um, the wife, make sure they can do this if you have close friends or people that they are working. Yeah, yeah. Making sure that we can just get that good eye contact. Yes. Good job. And just get used to the idea that we look at people in the eyes. Looking at strangers in the eyes isn't going to right away be an uh, idea of conflict. It's going to be uh, attention. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And I am using a lot of treats to really reinforce this right now. And, uh, later on, we do want them to react without the treats. But even if I can just have them really engage with me right now. They're just not leaving me alone because I'm just look at how happy this dog is this posture. They just want to interact with me. Yes, good job. This is a good happy dog. I can even feel their little drooly. That could be a sign <laughs> of uh, anxiety or it could just be because they're just really excited about getting all these treats. So more happy cues are going to be like this nice sitting position. An angry dog is not going to be sitting because the sitting position basically is a stuck position. Yeah. So we're relaxed, we're nice and sitting. This is going to stay. If we can get a good person to come up while we're sitting, I think it's also going to be more important because uh, if we're going to be standing, we're going to have that chance to lunge. But if we're sitting, then we can't really lunge without at least getting out of that position. So when we interact with people, we really should make sure that he stays in firm sitting position every time. And if we try to get out of it, that's where we have the person retreat and wait until he gets back to the city. And this is about keeping him out of that idea of getting into the attack posture. Because if we can't even get into the attack posture, we're not even going to want to try it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. I, I've always had just a good uh, calm energy for dogs, and I just try to just always appreciate them. So I think that's just like how I um, appreciate them try to have them come to me in appreciation that I think we have a good report. I also work at the hotel, so I just interact with a lot of dogs. So the dog hotel here? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I get often stuck in the big room because my energy just calms all the big dogs down. Oh, so I just I keep everything nice and calm. So I just, a lot of times, just have a good calming energy that helps me make sure that dogs feel safe. And I think it's also because I try to just tell myself all I'm ever going to do is try to keep these dogs safe. I'm never going to do anything but let them hurt, hurt each other. I'm always just here to keep them safe. Yeah. And I think that positive reinforcement in giving myself just uh, basically uh, goes out and make me feel it. That's how we make good friends. Come here, girls. Sit. We have seen a little bit of progress with Eros already. He still can't be trusted off-leash around strangers, of course. But he's better about waiting before jumping out of the car, and he's a little less stressed about being left alone inside for very short periods of time. Yes. He's better about listening to us 
most of the time, we still have a ways to go. All right, so Jake had a couple of really good suggestions that I wanted him to re-go over for this video. Go for it. So um, what I basically explained is that here at PetSmart, we also have a Pets Hotel and daycare. And that basically is a place where dogs can come and interact with each other and um, get safe supervision without the parents. Um, and so they get to play with other people, interact with other people and other dogs, and all within the safety of your PetSmart Hotel under our staff. And then uh, they get to experience time away from the mom and dad. This is uh, really important because it just shows them uh, longer and different energy. When we're connected to mom and dad, for instance, we really want to protect them and we have that big, strong energy. So as we get disconnected and get released and get to put around a bunch of dogs, like we're at a dog park or anything, we're just going to change our persona of them. It'd be really great to see how Eros is because they really love dogs and they will get in every uh, break in every instance that they would just enjoy being around other dogs again. Also, the hotel has a variety of people who are all dog friendly and who are all going to want to be able to say hi to Eros. And they're all going to do so in an appropriate, fun manner. That's going to be good for Eros. And I'll actually show you that now. So, as in the hotel, we learned that some dogs are just kind of scared or skittish or sometimes just don't want to always say hi. And so, to help dogs for this, basically, we need to show them that we have a nice, friendly treat. And then we're going to turn our side to them, basically because our front side is our danger side and our back side is our safe side. So as our back side is our safe side, we now lower our posture, making us smaller. Now we're easier to see, we don't have to look up as high to us, and we can get close. The irises are very friendly with me already, so they already come up. But generically, I would turn my back, lower my hand, giving them a treat. And the reason for this is that I cannot do anything in this position to attack Eros. Eros can recognize from my body posture, because as a dog, all we do is talk with our body language first, that I cannot do anything aggressive toward him. So he knows all he's I'm safe. Doing is showing safe. Yeah. And so this is how I show Eros this is safe. And that's how we need to let people interact with Eros at first until he really realizes. This, other than that, will just be coming up to Eros, heading him on the chin, heading him on the chest, not looking at him in the eyes, so that way we don't challenge him, and we just want to give him good, gentle loves and attention, but not eye contact. Good job. Good job. And then make sure you're also reminding people not to come up from here. This is the blind spot. This is the not safe oh. place. They're already maybe kind of content with me here, but you can kind of see these sad ears. Kind of scary still. Still not exactly sure what's going on always, what's up here. Can't so, see it, doesn't trust it. So they need to have a trusting hand as in a safe, easy spot until they're comfortable with the person so they can come up and get close. And definitely, definitely don't let anyone hug your dog unless you know it's going to be safe. Because if we're hugged, it's basically getting trapped. Oh. And that's bad. Hmm. So don't let anyone come up to your, hug your dog especially little children, try to remind them first, tell the parents, don't let them, don't let a kid hug a dog. That's in general. Don't hug a dog that's not sure of, that you're not sure of. You're just trapping them in your arms and dogs don't like being trapped. Okay. And that's how we get them to react. Good job, Sid. Good friends. And we just need to get arrows to have enough friendly interactions so that way we're friendly with everyone. And that's back to the hotel idea. It's just a mm -hmm. good way to desensitize to yep. new the people away from our way. energy. Yep. And they're going to be safe, positive energy. That's going to be um, all there for the dog. And we're just there to try to make sure the dog's happy, good energy, monitor it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shmita. You're doing so good today. Yes, you are. <laughs>